Welcome back, Algebra 3 students. We are in Lesson 19, and we're going to talk about some nonlinear systems. We know how to solve uh, linear systems through um, elimination or substitution. That's when we have two or three of those um, linear equations that are like x plus y equals 9 or 2x plus 4x equals 14, and we put them together, we eliminate something, we multiply around, we solve for x and y using elimination or substitution. We can do the same thing when we have a non-linear equation. And a non-linear just means that the variables have exponents other than 1, specifically exponents to the second degree. And those would be like circles and hyperboles and things like that. So let's look at 19.1 and figure out how to solve a system of equation that is non-linear. So here we have a circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And remember, when we have uh, whatever this is, what we end up doing is we square it or we unsquare it, and that is the radius of the circle from the origin. And as long as there are no coefficients here, it begins at the origin. So let's look at this one. It's paired with, this is a circle. This one is paired with a line. So this is y minus x is equal to 1. And we know that's a line because both the x and the y only have the degree of 1 to them. And that's a linear equation. That's a line. So um, how do we solve for that? Well, one of the things that I see right away is that um, we could solve for one of these variables in this equation and then use it to substitute into this equation. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to add x to both sides just because it's easy. Um, it gets rid of any negative numbers in this. And that, you know, negatives just kind of cloud up the equation. So this will bring a little clarity. So y is equal to x plus 1. All right, that's easy peasy. So we can sub that in for the value of y. x squared plus x plus 1 squared is equal to 9. And if you take the time um, on a separate sheet of paper or on your scratch paper to solve this, you'll see that that is going to be equal to x squared plus 2x um, plus 1 and that's equal to 9. So when I subtract 9 from both sides and I combine my like terms I find that I have 2x plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now that should look familiar. That is a quadratic equation and that is exactly how we're going to solve for x. We're going to take these values. This will be a, this is b, and this is c. And we're going to put them into the quadratic equation, which says x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right? That is our quadratic formula. So we're going to drop those values in, and we'll have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, this would be 2 squared, so that would be 4, and then um, negative 4, I'm just going to write it out. That makes it easier. 2 and negative 8. And remember, whenever we have a value here, we take the sign in front of the coefficient, and that gives us the positive or negative. Um, this is over 2 times 2, which would be 4. So negative 2 plus or minus, and this is 4. Let's just do this first. Uh, negative 4 times 2 is a negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 8 is a positive 64. Positive 64 plus 4 is a positive 68. And that is all over 4. All right, so I know that we can factor 68. And when we factor it, we get 2 times 2 times 17. So that becomes negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 17 over 4. But we can reduce this because all of these numbers here are divisible by 2. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 17, and those are both over 2, because with a radical, we want to um, separate the fractions. That's the proper format. 
So now we have two values for x. We have um, this value, we have negative 1 half plus the square root of 17 over 2. And then we have negative 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2. And now we have to find the value of y for both of these. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use this right here to find the value of y because it already has, it's already solved for y. So it makes sense to use that. So I'm going to put um, the value of x here, negative 1 half plus square root of 17 over 2 plus 1. So my answer to this, 1 and a negative 1 half leaves a positive 1 half plus the square root of 17 over 2. And now for this one, the, the negative, I'm going to say negative 1 half minus square root of 17 over 2 plus 1. Well, that's going to be a positive 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2. Those are my two values, um, or my two points based on the two values that I have for x. And that's all that I have. That's all I can do with that. Because there's nothing to undo further, I didn't have any square roots um, to solve for y with. All right, so those are the points that I would graph. So I want to show you how that would be graphed. So I'm going to go over here to desmos.com, and I'm going to, there's also a free app um, that you can put on your phone. You do not have to spend a hundred and something bucks on a graphing calculator. Just download the Desmos app. It is free to your smartphone, and this is what you end up with. You end up with this. Now there's a little, on your phone, this will already be showing, the little keyboard. But on your computer, um, it's just displayed a little bit differently, but it's all the same functions, right? So I'm going to type in those two systems. First, the circle. So we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. Okay, that's the circle. Remember I told you that we take the 9 and we um, unsquare it. So we put it under the radical symbol. Square root of 9 would be 3, and that is your radius of the circle. There we go, negative 3 and O, and it's to the origin when there is no coefficient here. So 3, O, 3, 3, O, O, negative 3. You see how that works? It just shifts based on... Um, the axis that it's aligning on, but the radius is always 3, and the origin here is the origin of our Cartesian coordinate system. So now I am going to put in the linear equation that we had, and that was y minus x equals 1. And you can see that here, okay. So now the two points that we found were the two points of intersection. So here's a point of intersection, and here's a point of intersection, right? So I'm going to pull this one up. I'm going to pull up my calculator, and I want to show you. So the way it was written was um, for our negative value of x. We had negative 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2 for our value of x. So I'm going to do that on the calculator and show you how it matches up. 17 square root of, right, divided by 2. That was the fraction. That equals, and it was negative because it was minus, it was minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. Okay, so that's that number right there. And then we had a negative 1 half. So we subtracted half, 0.5. Negative 2.5615. This rounds up negative 2.562. Negative 2.562. How about that? Isn't that just fantastic? 
All right, so now let's do the y value that goes with that x. And that was positive 1 half minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. So again, square root of 17 divided by 2, okay, and that was a negative because it was minus the square root of 17 over 2. But then we had a positive 1 half, right? It was positive 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2. So we'll add 0.5 to that. And again, this rounds up to 2, so negative 1.562, negative 1.562. How cool is that? So you see, you can reduce these things to a decimal um, when, you, when we get there, right? The whole point of this exercise and in doing it this way is for you to see where the decimal comes from because anybody can just throw some numbers in the calculator and figure out, you know, uh, a graphing calculator and figure out the points. And you see, that's easy. But just seeing this decimal here doesn't tell you how you got there. You don't know why it's 2.562, right? Um, that's why we do it the way that we do it, so that you understand how to get to that point. Because if you don't have a graphing calculator, then you at least know how to get there with a regular calculator to find the point on your um, on your graph and then you can do it the correct way. Alright, so that's how you would double check your points to make sure that you got the right answer. You can do that. You can use this graphing calculator to give you the decimal and then you can just solve the points um, solve for the points, the x and y value, and when you get it to where it matches, you know that you got the right answer, okay? So that's just another way to double check your figures for now. That's what I'd like for you to use it. If you can come back and double check it, then you know you've done the right thing because these are exactly the, um, the formulas from the book or the equations from the book and everything lines up. We know we did that problem correct. So let's move on. Let's go back to our good notes and get it. There we go. All right, so let's do 19.2 uh, along the same lines. Only this time we have our same circle, which was X squared plus Y squared equals nine. That's our circle. But now we're going to have a hyperbola with that. Hold on, let me turn the page and it is going to be 2x squared minus y squared equals a negative 6. And that's the hyperbola. All right, and it's a hyperbola because we have a number here and we have a, um, a negative sign here. All right, so... Um, I see right away that, and I hope you see it too, we can use elimination to get rid of these two. They're the same value, just opposites of one another. So when we draw our line, those two immediately cancel out. So then we're left with 3x squared, and then this would be a positive 3. When we divide both sides by 3, x squared is equal to 1. When we unsquare, both sides, x is equal to a plus or minus square root of 1, which means that x is equal to a positive or negative 1. So let's solve for y using that. So let's just use the x squared plus y squared because that's easy. So um, let's do positive 1 first. So 1 times 1 is positive 1, right? That's what we're doing, positive 1. 1 plus y squared is equal to 9. When I subtract 1 from both sides, y squared is equal to 8. When I unsquare, that cancels, y is equal to the square root of 8, which we know factors 2 times 2 times 2. So that's going to be plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. So we have two values for the positive 1, and that would be 
positive one and um, two times the square root of two and one and negative two times the square root of two. Those are our two values for um, a positive one. So let's try negative one. So if we have negative one, and we sub that in to x squared plus y squared equals 9. Uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is still just 1 plus y squared. We do the exact same things that we did before. This cancels. y is equal to positive, negative, plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. So for a uh, negative 1 value of x, we also have a positive 2 times the square root of 2, and we also have a negative 2 times the square root of 2. So we have four points that we have to worry about. So let's go back to our Desmos and let's check it out. Let's see what we got. So I'm going to clear these old ones out and I'm going to type in, well, I guess I could have left the circle. I don't know why I didn't think to just leave that x squared plus y squared equals 9. All right, there's our circle. So let's do another one. And that is the hyperbola. And that's going to be 2x squared minus y squared is equal to negative 6. And there's uh, our hyperbola. And they're opposite of each other like that. They're mirror images. And um, now we, if we click here, you can see you have one, two, three, four points of intersection. And you can see you have negative one, negative one. Those are our two negative values of x. We have positive one, positive one, our two positive values of x. And we also have negative two, negative two, our two negative values of y and positive 2, positive 2 are two positive values of y. So I'm just going to solve for those positive value or for the value of y, right? Just one time because it's 2 squared or the square root of 2 times 2, right? And so that would be 2.828. That doesn't round. And you have a positive version and you have a negative version. And that's the same number we have here. So you can see how that, it's kind of cool how that happens, how that works. But then you can find those two points on your graph and then you know to loop it through. And once you find your vertex, you loop it through and you make sure it intersects at those points and then you know you've graphed it correctly. So, um, and your graphing calculator would help a lot with that too. But you can get to that number without having to have this. You can do it with just a regular calculator, or I should say a scientific calculator. So let's go and look at another example with a hyperbola and a line. So we're going to use, uh, this is 19.3. This is our hyperbola. XY is equal to negative 4. And that's hyperbola. And then our line is going to be y is equal to negative x minus 2. And we, we, we know what this is. This is y is equal to mx plus b, right? We see that because we have um, the slope is negative 1 over 1. And our interceptor is negative 2, our y-intercept there. Uh, so that is, we recognize that one pretty readily. All right, so we're going to do the same thing, though. We're going to figure out a way to solve for um, one of these in order to sub it in here. And I think that, well, we really don't have to. We've already got a substitution value. We can substitute this in for y. So let's just do that. That's already set up for us. So x times negative x minus 2, because that's the value of y, 
is equal to negative 4. So when I multiply, I get negative x squared minus 2x is equal to negative 4. So I can say negative x squared minus 2x, and I add 4 to both sides, plus 4 is equal to 0. I can, that is a quadratic formula, right? Negative 1, negative 2, positive 4 is my a, b, and c. So I can drop that in. Negative b, so be negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of uh, negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times positive 4 all over 2 times negative 1. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so this would be positive 2, plus or minus, and then this would be 4, and negative 4 times negative 4 would be positive 16, right? So that would be 20. all over negative 2, which we know we can never have a negative denominator. So we multiply by negative 1, and that gives us negative 2 plus or minus square root of 20 over 2. All right, that obviously can be factored out. So 2 over 2 is just going to be a negative 1 plus or minus square root of 20. Now we know we can simplify this. 4 times 5, that would be 2. So this becomes a negative 1 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. All right, that is our value for x. Yes, so we have a positive and a negative value. So x could be equal to, let me just put my parenthesis up here, um, x is equal to a what did I do? Ah, uh, I see what I did. I didn't reduce when I should have all right, so you should resolve, always resolve your radical if you can, 2 times the square root of 5 before you divide. This, that's a step that you have to remember is before you can divide up here, all of this has to be resolved. So that ends up being a um, negative 1. x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 because this should have been divided by 2 as well. All right, so the first value of x is negative 1 plus the square root of 5. And the second is negative 1 minus the square root of 5. And then we'll find our y's for both of those. And I'm just going to use this right here. y is equal to negative x minus 2 in order to find that. So y is equal to, let's use the positive first. So that would be negative, and then that would be negative 1 plus the square root of 5 minus 2. So negative times a negative 1 is a positive 1, and a negative times this would be a negative square root of 5 minus 2. So that would be negative 1 minus the square root of 5. All right, so now doing the same thing, we're going to do the negative version of this. So y would equal negative, negative 1 minus square root of 5 minus 2, positive 1 minus the square root of 5 minus 2. That would be negative, oh, I'm sorry, plus, because it's negative times negative. So that would be a negative 1 plus square root of 5. for the negative version of that. 
So those are our two points that we have. All right, so let's go and graph these two and see how that plays out. So I'm going to eliminate these two and I'm going to start over. And our, our hyperbola is xy is equal to a negative 4. All right, so there's our hyperbola. So let's do our line. y is equal to negative x minus 2. And let's see our points. So we have a point here and we have a point here. All right, and I'm going to pull up our calculator and show how we got to those points. So our, um, this is one of our x's here. This is our negative, uh, negative 1 minus the square root of 5. So let's do that one. So we have 5 square root of, okay, and then that was a negative, and then we have a negative 1, so minus 1. So that is a negative 3.236, negative 3.236 right there. Okay. And if you remember, our y value was the opposite. So negative 3.236 on the other one because it flip-flopped, right? So negative 3.236 was here and here because they're opposites. So let's find this one. We had a negative 1 plus the square root of 5. So it's a positive square root of 5. And then that was minus 1. So minus 1. So positive 1.236 for the y value here, but for the x value here. Because if we go back and look, you see that here the x value is this, here the y value is this. In this one, this is the y value and this is the x value. They just flip flop places between the two points, which is what our graph showed. So I think it's kind of cool to um, get our points and then go and double check and make sure what we have matches up. So um, again, I'll show you what I did because sometimes it's hard to remember. So here, right, 5 square root minus 1. That was our positive number, 1.236. So that will be 1.236. Same numbers here, 1.236. And then again, we'll solve for this number. So we had 5 square root of, and that was a negative number. And then we had a minus 1, minus 1. Negative 3.236. So negative 3.236 was here and negative 3.236 was here. And then we go back to our graph and we see those same points. Very cool, huh? If you, if you like that sort of thing, I happen to like that sort of thing. And then this again was our points that we used to determine our, um, our line. So we have the y-intercept point was negative two that's this right here, 0, negative 2. And it was just uh, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1. So that is the slope of our line, down 1 over 1, and it just goes all the way through. All right. So let's look at factoring exponentials. So that was kind of fun. Yes, I want to leave the page. There we go. All right. Let me clear this. So, um, sometimes we have to factor the exponentials and uh, exponential expressions, and when the um, they're really complicated, 
like when they they have the you know a number sentence in the exponent sometimes it gets you know very complex and you're gonna like okay you gotta wrap your head around it there's a way there's a method that you can use to wrap your head around it and I'm going to show you how to do that in these uh, exponentials here so we're going to factor this so we have 3x and then that x is 2n plus 2 that is the exponent for that again like I said just you know a complicated value and this is 12x and 3n plus 3 is the exponent for that complicated exponential terms and they do not look like like terms so one of the things that we can do to kind of um, break this up to help us out right is we can factor this out so we can see it so what we really have here is 3 times x to the n times x to the n right so it's 2n times x squared does that make sense you see the 2n here there's two n's plus 2 that's the 2 right there this is what we have in that one plus 12 times actually I'll take that back that'd be 3 times 4 times x to the n x to the n x to the n because that's a 3n times x cubed right I can see that can you see that and we can even break this down more and we could say x squared times x that's the same thing as x cubed now we can see how to factor that we can pull out the things that are common from both terms so I see a 3 is common to both terms pretty readily so pull out the 3 so that 3 is gone and I see x to the n x to the n in both so we can pull out x to the 2n here and here and here and here and I also see x squared and x squared in both of them so we can say plus 2 pull out this one and this one so now we just have here we took everything away so there's always the invisible factor of 1 whenever we get rid of an entire term we want to keep a placeholder for it because it has a real value we need to know when we multiply to put that value back in there so we leave the factor 1 so that would be 1 for this first term plus we have 4 and then we have x and oh, we have n here I'm sorry we have an n and we have a 1 so it'd be n plus 1 does that make sense is that easier than what you thought it would be um, but when we have these little complex factors you know we look at them and go there's gotta be a way to take that something common out of that and simplify it that's how you do it break it down into its components and then you're much more able to see what you can factor out <coughs> excuse me I'm so sorry so let's do another one so let's do 19.5 and we have x to a minus y to b over x a minus y b all right so we first we look at it and we recognize that the numerator is really just the difference of two squares if you remember the the difference of two squares we know that we can write it a different way right we know we can write it like this we can say xa squared minus yb squared over xa minus I'm sorry that's plus plus yb 
Okay, so we see that, we understand how that works. We know that what that really is, is x to the a plus y to the b times x to the a minus y to the b, right? Because they cancel out when we multiply here. So we would have a yb um, xa positive and an xa yb negative. So those would cancel out, but then that would give us xa squared and negative yb squared, right? So we can see that. So then that allows us to then cancel this. We can cancel that one and that one. That leaves one on the bottom, which makes us a whole number. So our answer resolved or reduced or simplified, whatever you want to call it, is this. XA minus YB. And that's all we have. So it's all about being able to recognize the different you know, uh, formats and scenarios when you see them. When you look at this, you should be able to say that is a difference of two squares when you look at the numerator. Okay. You, you understanding how to factor and what that looks like when you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, you know that that is the difference of two squares. So that is your clue that you can factor it and possibly reduce, which is what we ended up doing. All right, so that's all for that. We're going to do one more thing, and that is the sum and difference of two cubes. We did that towards the end of last year, so I'm not sure if you remember or not, but we are going to do it anyway. You know how we divide um, equations or not equations, but expressions by expressions, right? We can do long division with expressions. When you have these cubes, we could do that and get the same answer, but there's a format that we were given that makes it so much simpler. And that format is to, or the processor should say, is to, um, Find the cube, and then based on whether it is a plus or a minus, dump it into the proper format. So for instance, um, let's do this one. We have a um, cubed plus b cubed. And we can factor this by saying a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. That's how we factor a cube. Now we can get there um, by doing the math we could say, okay, well, I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide and figure out how to get there and figure out what my pieces are, right? I'm going to take a, a, this a plus b and put it into a plus b. So you could say a plus b divided or a cubed plus b cubed divided by a plus b. And then you um, do all of the math associated with that. I don't want to do all the math associated with that. But you could do that. You could say, all right, A times what gives me A cubed? That'd be A squared. A squared times A is A cubed. And then that would be A squared B, right? So then you would change the signs that would cancel. This would be a negative a squared b. a goes into this, uh, negative ab. That would give you negative a squared b. 
and then that would give you a negative AB squared. Change the signs, this cancels. AB squared, this goes into this, it gives you um, positive B, B times this gives you, am I doing that right? Yeah, AB squared. AB squared plus B cubed. Bring this down. Change the sign. This cancels, this cancels. So this would be this right here, right? We got from one to the other by dividing this by the base, which was A plus B. You don't have to go to all those links in order to get the same thing because it always ends up being the same format. It's been proven time and time again that it is always a certain method to doing this. And those formats are the first thing cubed plus the second thing cubed, which is the format we have here. The first thing cubed plus the second thing cubed. And that format ends up being the first thing plus the second thing times the first thing squared minus the first thing times the second thing plus the second thing squared every single time. And if you look, the first thing is A, the first thing times the second thing plus the second thing squared. And if you have a minus sign, first thing cubed minus the second thing cubed, that just ends up being the first thing minus the second thing. And then everything is positive in here, but it's the same, I don't know why I wrote a five, but it's the same format. It's just that this is a positive, the negative moves to the outside. So F squared plus the first thing times the second thing plus the second thing squared always ends up being the same format. It just the only thing that changes is when this is a minus here, the minus moves out here and all of these are positive. When this is a plus, there's a minus between the first thing squared and the first thing times the second thing. It's always the same. So I'm going to erase this and we're going to factor based on the format. So I have x cubed y cubed minus p cubed. This is a minus. So we use the second form. We we'll use the minus form. So all we have to do is say xy minus p times first thing squared x squared y squared plus xyp plus p squared. Done. Done. That's it. There's no reason to go through all of those steps when we know this is going to be the answer. And it is always the answer. So let's do one more. So here we have this one, by the way, was 19.6. This one is 19.7. This one is 8 times m cubed y to the 6 plus x cubed. First thing is we know 8, the cube root of 8 is going to be 2, and this is going to be m, and this is going to be y squared. And because it's positive, it's positive, and then this is going to be x. All right, first thing squared, that's the first thing. Four times, 2 times 2 is 4, m times m is m squared, and y squared times y squared is y to the fourth minus 2my squared x plus x squared. Easy peasy. And that is all there is to that. That is exactly the right answer. And you didn't have to do all the steps. You just had to remember the format. So put this format in your notebooks. 
I would put it on the back just for the sake of having it because it, it in itself is a formula. It makes it to where you don't have to do all the steps in the division of those expressions. And that's all we have for lesson 19. I will see you in lesson 20.